Put your hand in your heart. Let's pray before Brother Jeremy comes. Jesus, right now, I ask you, Lord, through the words that are spoken tonight, would you speak to me? I thank you, Lord, that you are here. You're in our midst. I thank you for Brother Jeremy. I thank you for the miracle that you're doing. The miracle that you're doing is a testimony to this entire community and this church and this family. I ask you, God, to use every word that he speaks tonight to speak to my heart. Everyone in this congregation, I'm going to give you praise. Can you give a warm welcome tonight to Brother Jeremy Adams? never know how much it cost to see him on that cross man that's why each and every one of us is here tonight because of him because of him before we uh, before we get into the word and things tonight I just uh, right quick me and uh, for, for those of you that are maybe not be in our uh, Facebook group on uh, Facebook <laughs> Uh, this is the guide for reading the Bible through in a year. Me and Brother Daniel have challenged the men of this church to join us in reading God's Word through this year. So you can pick this up from the uh, Welcome Center in the, in the foyer if, you, if you'd like to join us. Even though I know we're, well, we're almost what, two weeks now in, but if you double up, you'll be, you'll be right caught for just a couple of days. But we challenge you to read and, and, and to get that Word in your heart. I did it. Um, in 2018, I should have did it last year, but as I talk, you'll, you'll probably understand why I didn't, but uh, I needed to, but uh, it was a great accomplishment, man, when I, when I checked off that last December date, you know, Sam, and I knew that, you know, that was an accomplishment in my life, but what we'll do, Brother Daniel, is uh, our first men's breakfast next year, everybody that gives us one of these, you'll get a little completion certificate, and, and uh, we'll give you that. Also, if anyone's here, uh, next month we'll have Brother uh, Sammy Sherrill. He'll do our men's prayer breakfast. That'll be on February 22nd. And uh, I know I told Rick to grab one, take back. Uh, Mr. Frankie, good to see you. Take one back to, to your side. Y'all welcome to join us. Amen. I appreciate everybody that's here tonight and all my friends and family. So good to see you here. just overwhelms me. Thank you to my church. Thank you for everything you've done for <clears throat> excuse me, me and my family. I appreciate that. All the prayers and, and the contributions, the meals, and just the love that you've given us. I appreciate that. I've had a lot of my friends and, and work family and family that has come and told me, several of them, and you know, how, how good our church was. And uh, it's a testament to who we are as a church. We've got the best church, uh, I think. And, yeah. Amen. I had a great group of people. And I love you. You mean the world to me. And I mean that, each and every one of you. But <clears throat> let's thank everybody that's here. My dad's here. My mom's here. Appreciate all that. Everything they've done for me. My mom keeps me in soup. Sometimes I can't hardly eat anything but soup. All I got to do is just text her, and she'll have it down that day. Have me some soup. I appreciate that. Appreciate everything that that they've done for me, you know, seeing their son go through things like this. I pray for them every day. It's good to, to see my Aunt Faye here tonight. This is my dad's sister. Not just to point anybody out, but I remember Brother Johnson when I was coming up from little. Many, many times I seen Aunt Faye dancing in these aisles and speaking in tongues. As you see, you see Luke here on the front. That's four generations of Pentecost right there. I'm not ashamed of my heritage. I'm not ashamed of Pentecost. I'm not ashamed to dance. I'm not ashamed to speak in tongues. But Luke, we've got a heritage to keep on going, son. But I got to thinking about that, and I said, you know, I bet Sister Sister Mavis Corley, I guess, see, I bet, I bet Aunt Faye learned a lot of how to pray from a pastor's wife. She learned how to pray from a godly mother, Grandmother Adams. Amen. I'm so thankful for that tonight. We'll get into the Word. If you, uh, I, I got a couple of scriptures, not a lot, and I won't scare you. And we'll just skip around a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And Brother Johnson was talking a little bit about our conversation. I think me and him got to talking. We were kind of on the same page. And I said, man, it's, it might be time to do a, do a series on that. He said, bro, it's already in the works. We're already going to get it started. I'm sorry, my nose started running. But uh, I got, a, like I say, a couple of scriptures just to lay a little groundwork. Uh, so if you do have your Bibles or your devices, we'll go to 2 Samuel chapter 15 and uh, verse 12. do desire your prayers tonight. I have felt them this season. really have. Second Samuel 15 and 12. The Bible says, Then Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor from his city, from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy grew strong for the people, with Absalom continually increased in number. Then we'll go to verse 31. Then someone told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. 2 Samuel 16 and 23 says, Now the advice of Ahithophel, which he gave in those days, was if one had acquired at the oracle of God, so was all the advice of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. Moreover, it hit the, uh, excuse me, we'll go to 2 Samuel 17, 1 through 3. <clears throat> excuse me. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Now let me choose 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue David tonight, and all the people who were with him will flee, and I will strike only the king. Then will I bring back all the people to you. When all return except the man whom you seek, all the people will be at peace. Then we'll go to Psalms 55, 12 through 14. This will be the, the last. And the psalmist David said, For it is not an enemy who reproaches me, then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me, then I could hide from him. But it was you, a man my equal, my companion, my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God and throne. Brother Johnson told us last night our, our title, but for you who wasn't here, well, wasn't that a great prayer service last night? But if I had a title for this tonight, I'd title it The Bait I Almost Took. One more time, would you just lift your hands, stretch them this way. Let's ask the Lord to help us tonight. You may be seated. I about forgot last time I think I was up here. I want to thank my wife. I don't even know where she's at, but I want to thank you, praying and fasting. Thank God for a godly wife that will stand behind me. Amen. I appreciate it. I don't know if I told her or not, but I sure thought it. That just the way that I've been feeling this week and week, her, her prayers and her fasting this week is what to make this message tonight. But we read, we read the story here of Ahithophel. I say the story, we laid a little groundwork, but Ahithophel was David's counselor, uh, his, his advisor. He, he was his right-hand man, if you will. I believe they spent a lot of time together. <clears throat> I believe that they were close. I believe that there was, there was a, a, a friendship there that just came especially when you read uh, Psalms uh, 55, 12 through, through 14, when he says, you know, that it was you, my equal, my companion, and my acquaintance. He said, we took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God and throne. We'll come back to Ahithophel in a little bit. But as Brother Johnson began to talk a while ago about our conversation that we had as we were, we were talking, and uh, we began to to look, uh, I did, I guess, at, at what I went through a year, year and a half or so ago and had some things that kind of that came my way, Sammy, and, you know, came into my heart that, that I let uh, 
kind of overtake me for a little while. But, but before that offense came, there was something that, that kind of happened, I guess, before that, if you will. And it started out with, with a heart condition. My, my heart, uh, Brother Wheat probably explained a little bit better, but you know, when, you, when you're getting ready to plant a field, you gotta, you know, you gotta go out and plow it and you know, fertilize it. I mean, it has, to be, it has to be ready so it can take the seed. And, and I don't know if that's a good analogy to use for this, but that's kind of how I felt like, that, that I had kind of let my heart get to a place, Brother Johnson, that that offense could be planted, that, that bitterness, that root of bitterness could be planted there. The Bible says, Jeremiah 17 and 9 said, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately, desperately wicked. That's why I believe that Paul said, I die daily. Because how many times have we heard Brother Johnson, he's done it in his service tonight, that we would prepare our hearts. It's so important for us to stay on a day-to-day -day walk with God so our hearts are prepared so that when those offenses do come, because the Bible says they will come. That's a promise we have in God's word. Amen. That offenses will come. And so I had got to a place, I, I don't really know exactly how. I guess I maybe kind of fell into a rut or, or you know, just kind of got kind of stagnant, I guess, in my prayer life and in my, you know, my daily walk with God. I, I kind of found myself you know, doing my daily devotions, but I'd just be watching the clock, you know, and, and just as soon as my time was up, you know, man, I've got my devotions in, I can go and get about my day now, you know. And so my heart became to a place that Satan was able to plant that little, that little seed of bitterness when that offense came. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, and so when the offense came to me, when I felt offended, uh, of course, you know, when they always say, Brother Jeremy, that hindsight's twenty twenty. Looking back, I, I realized that, that what had happened to me was not just an, out, an outright uh, attack on me, you know, but, but my heart had got to that prayer, prayer place, Rick, that I felt like that when the offense happened, oh, that was a personal attack on me, you know, on, on, on my life and, and on who I was. And so... As, as, as you, as you kind of follow, you can almost kind of follow a timeline. And, 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 I, and I guess this probably happens in, um, in most people maybe that, that get offended. But so when that offense came, the first thing I did was I just threw up walls. You know, I, I, did, I didn't want any help. I, I didn't want anybody man, to talk to me. And, and it, it began to uh, just kind of overtake, I guess, my life. And, and as it did, I, I see, looking back now, I see things that began to change in me. You know, me and Brother Sammy would sit on the front. I got to think about that today, Sammy. When we started sitting on the front, we could sit anywhere on the front we wanted to. You come in here on Sunday morning, you may not get a front row seat, you know, and I, I thank God for that. But I don't know if we started it, but I take credit for it. <laughs> yeah, we got to have our name on something around here, don't we? But... But so I, I, you know, so for the first thing, but Daryl, I'd sit right there, and then when that fence came, I didn't, no, I, that's too close for me. I, I don't want to be involved in, so I moved back a little bit, you know, and I'd just sit back here. I'd sit with my wife, you know, come up with all kinds of excuses, and, and, uh, and so the first effect, I think, that it had on me was it, 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 it affected my church life. You know, I, I, I didn't care, Brother Daniel. I, I just kind of let him handle the men's group. And I appreciate everything you do, man, for the men's group. But I, I said, you know, I let him handle that. I, I don't want to be involved in it. I just come to church. I just do my little bit. I come in, clap my hands. And, you know, I might raise my hand. And then I'm out the door. You know, I'm ready to go. And uh, I heard Brother Sammy Sherrill, who, like I say, be with us next month. But I heard him preach. One time, I think it was at a men's conference, I believe it was, at a men's conference where he preached it. But, um, but he talked about that scripture that says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And he, I never really thought about it. And he said, How do we tempt God? And, it, and this was not even uh, listening to the message. This was listening to the CD, you know, several months later. And, but he said, and, and I hadn't forgot it yet, but he said, We tempt God when we come to church. We sit on our pew. 
We do just enough, Tommy. We do just enough to get by. He said, that's how we tempt God. We come in, we, you know, we clap our little hands, we say a little prayer, you know, we go about our day, we come back in next Sunday, you know, sing a little hymn. And, and, <clears throat> and so we, and we went through the book that brother, with Brother Kenzie about, you know, reaching our full potential with God. That's one thing that God wants from us. He don't want just part of us. He don't want just half of us, but he wants us to be completely sold out 100% to him. And so then that's, that's kind of where I had gotten to and, and my heart was, well, you know, this, this 10%'s for this and this 10%'s for that and this 10%'s for church and, you know, and I just kind of sectioned everything off. <clears throat> but it also began to affect my family life. Me and my wife, we, we would go walk back then and we, we'd be gone 45 minutes to an hour, you know, walking and, and uh, when we got back, you know, kind of realized, man, the only thing I did was, man, I just... I critiqued everything about the church that I could, you know. It seemed like every little thing after that offense came, it, it seemed like every little thing was an attack on me. But I complained about, you know, I, I can't believe they, they let that person sing the song. I can't believe they sang that song, you know. I, I can't believe Sister Debbie sang that song that loud, you know, or that long, or, you know, or I can't believe Brother Johnson, you know, preached that long today, or I can't believe he didn't preach today. And it was like every little thing that happened, you know, around the church, I, you know, it just, just irritated me, you know, just like it was a personal attack on, on me. But it also began to, to, like I say, affect my family because then here I am supposed to be the leader, you know, supposed to be the leader of my home. And, and here I am just down in the church and down in this and down in that, just, uh, you know, just all, 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 um, all down, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. But, uh, you know, just all being discouragement, you know, to my family and, and probably snapping at them, and, you know, because uh, it, it just started working its, its way out. Started working its way, you know, into my marriage. It would affect, you know, my marriage and the way that I treated my wife. And, and, and several times, thank the Lord, but she would tell me, say, baby, you got to get over this. You just got to let it go. But I didn't want to. I, you know, they had wronged me. They had done something against me. And I wanted the world to know it, you know. It was kind of how I acted. But Larry, it began to affect my work life. And, and I got, got several of my work family here. If you, if you work for Mobile County Public School System, raise your hand. Got several of them here. Sammy works. But I appreciate, appreciate y'all coming tonight. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. But Larry, I, I've been there 15 years, so I know. And Rick, one of my close friends, I know you've seen it when, 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 that, when that tide turned for me I, because it affected my countenance. It affected the way I, I worked. It affected the way I acted at work. I just, I'd come in and my supervisor, he's here tonight, but I felt like my supervisor's against me, my foreman's against me, my co-worker's against me. You know, this whole place, this whole school system is against me. They all hate me, you know. <laughs> you, you couldn't do anything, right? You go do something for a teacher, she complains that you didn't do this or, you know. But, um, but it, it began to affect, you know, my relationships at work. And, and, and when this was all over, and Larry can testify to this, but when this was all over, I went to him and, and, and tears in my eyes, and I said, what bothers me the most about these nine, ten months that, that, that I let all this bother me was that there's people here that has started. I said, they don't even know that I go to church, you know, because I just come in, I just down everything, you know, talk about this and talk about that. And, but I got to thinking about that. And uh, what, what made me, I think, prick my heart on that was the way that I was acting was Brother Daniel, and I'm not sure who else, but Brother Daniel, and I know Sister Turner uh, had spoke, uh, I think it was, I don't know if it was a Christmas service, maybe, I think it was New Year's Eve uh, service maybe, but uh, you, you spoke on what, what do you want your kids to catch you doing? And, uh, you know, you want to catch you praying, you want them to catch you fasting and reading your Bible, things like that. And, and Sister Turner got up and, and she spoke on, you know, how that we are not citizens of this world, but we are heavenly citizens and we should be representatives of Christ. And that pricked my heart that, that I hadn't been a representative of Jesus Christ. And so, like I say, I, I had to go after this was over. I went to Larry, went to my foreman, asked for forgiveness. I went to Larry probably several times <laughs> asking for forgiveness, but... But, uh, but it began to affect my work, you know, I, I mean, I, to where I didn't even want to go in. And, <clears throat> and it began to affect my walk with God also. Like I say, I'd, I'd get up and, you know, doing my devotions and, 
And then, you know, like I say, everything just felt like everything was an attack that would come my way. It felt like everything that happened to me was just a personal uh, vendetta against me. To where finally I just said, you know what? Man, doing these, these prayers and reading my Bible in the morning, this ain't, you know, this ain't, even, it ain't even working. And so then I, I began to let my daily walk with God go. <clears throat> and that root just began to take, that bait just began to go deeper and deeper. You know, I just try to justify my actions. And Brother Jeremy Russell, I've heard you say it before, that we are a selfish people. And I believe one time what you told me was if, if we weren't so selfish, you know, more of this world would be saved. But we are a selfish people. We want to look out for number one. So that's why I believe that's why offenses are such a vital tool for Satan. Because what better way to get to you Brother Johnson, then to make you feel like you were wrong, that somebody has wronged me, you know? And so then it's easier to justify that. If, if I feel like I've been hurt, it's a little different if I feel like, okay, well, you hurt Sammy's feelings, you know, I'm a little mad at you or whatever, but, you know, but I still speak to you. But if you, if you, if you come against me, <laughs> you know, it's a little different. But if you come against me, Sammy's bigger than me, so I just get him on you. <laughs> But so I tried to justify my actions, you know. Well, like I say, you know, Megan would say, baby, you got to get over this. You got to brush this off. You, you got to let it go. And no, they, they wronged me. And, 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 and bless God, they, you know, I want the world to know what, what you know, what's happened to me. I, I say what's happened, but, you know, not details, but you know what I mean, that I had, that I had felt that I had been wronged. And so you say, well, I see you up here speaking tonight, so what happened? And, uh, well, that's our next point. So something kind of changed in me. and uh, I, I don't know, Brother Tony, and I'm sorry, but I don't remember what Sunday school was about that morning. And, and it may be something that, that was said in there that kind of kind of pricked my heart. But I, I just remember walking in, and I, and I walked down that aisle. You know, I sit over here close to where Bill was at. But I just remember that day. And, and, and as I walked in, we were doing pre-service prayer. Brother Jason, I walked down this aisle. I mean, this has been going on nine, ten months. I walked down this aisle here. They were doing pre-service prayer. I come up somewhere about right here. I just threw my hands up. I'd reached a desperate point in my life. And I just, I seen all these people up front praying. All, you know, crying and worshiping God and feeling the power of God on them. And, and I said, Lord, this is I can't do this anymore. I can't go on by myself anymore. And they began to, <clears throat> they began to sing. We began to worship. People began to gather around the front like we kind of normally do. But I mean, we began to pray and the spirit began to move. And Brother Johnson got up. He said, this is it. This is as far as the service needs to go. He said, you don't need another message. You don't need another sermon. He said, but you need a move of God and God's moving. And when he said that, I come right up here to these steps out right here. I'll never forget it. I knelt down. I just began to cry and began to pray and say, God, forgive me for being so lukewarm. Forgive me for being so cold. Forgive me for, for holding these grudges and, and feeling like I've been so offended. I said, God, I give it to you tonight. And so it kind of goes back in a circle. So now we're back at the heart. So then God began to restore that joy that I had lost, that I had let go. And I think I said it maybe in Sunday school, maybe in here, but I had the last couple of years it felt like the Lord had given me a scripture for that year. And Rick, I know you've me and you have talked about this scripture, but Nehemiah 8 and 10 is what I felt like the Lord gave me last year. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. That's, that's why, and, and, and I know me and you talked about this, Rick, but that's why the devil will try to come and steal your joy because he knows where your strength lies. Because once he has stole my joy, I mean, it, it affected everything. It affected my family, my wife. It affected my marriage, my work. It affected everything. And I'm closing. We, we're getting close. But I'm closing with this, and musicians, y'all can come. But I want to go back to Ahithophel for just a few minutes. Why was Ahithophel so bitter towards David? This was, this was someone who had been friends with him, who had been close with him. I believe they spent many, many hours together. 
I believe they, they commune together. If you believe uh, uh, in, in, in Psalms that we read, they worship together in the temple. They worship together in the church. But we read the scripture <clears throat> where he went to Absalom, Ahithophel did, and he said, just give me some men. And I'll go and I'll kill him. Here's a man that, that, that walked with David on a daily basis, that was friends with him. And now something has caused him that his hatred for David is so great, Brother Donald, that he would commit murder, that he would kill this man. What happened to Ahithophel? And I guess as Paul Harvey said, this is the rest of the story. But Ahithophel had a son. Jason, his name was Emil. And Emil had a daughter, and she was beautiful. I mean, everybody in the kingdom knew who she was. Every boy in the kingdom wanted to marry her. But one man found that favor. But okay, oh, that was Uriah. Uriah married Bathsheba, who was Ahithophel's granddaughter. <clears throat> I believe that Ahithophel said in his heart, David, when, when David stood out there and he looked across and he watched Bathsheba, you cannot convince me, Brother Johnson, that he didn't know who she was. Because this was his granddaughter, his best friend's granddaughter. He knew exactly who she was, I believe. And Ahithophel in his heart said, David, you destroyed my son's life. You destroyed my, my grandson-in-law. You killed him. You destroyed my granddaughter. I can never forgive you for what you've done. And if I be honest with myself tonight, I don't blame a hit the fail for feeling offended. I don't blame a hit the fail for getting mad and upset. But it's the way that he handled that offense. See, that's, that's what happened to me. It was the way that I handled that offense. No, for, for nine, ten months, I didn't handle it right. But 2 Samuel 17 and 23 says, Now when a hit the fail saw that his advice was not followed, he saddled a donkey and arose and went home to his house, to his city. Then he put his house in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in his father's tomb. But John said, as far as I can interpret from this scripture, Ahithophel died and went to hell because of the offense that he could not get over. I want to tell you tonight, church, offense as a house guest, you don't want taking up residence in your heart because he'll take too much, he'll stay too long, and he'll destroy your life. So as I begin to try to prepare my heart, you know, I could have walked out here that Sunday. I could have, I could have just let the devil get back up on my shoulder, whisper in my ear, you just got caught up in the emotions. You... You, you remember what happened. You remember what was said and, and all of this. But I'll tell you what I did that Sunday night, Larry. When I got home, I set my clock back again, you know. I said, I'm going to get back an hour early. I'm going to start my prayers back. I'm going to start my devotions back. I'm going to start that daily walk with God back again. Another thing that I did, well, I did my notes, but another thing that I did was I went to Brother Johnson. I told Brother Johnson, I said, no matter what, I can never ever, ever get back to this place. I said, I ask you as my pastor to be my mentor. I called Brother CJ. I said, Brother, I need, you know, and just explain some things to him. I said, I need somebody in my life. One of my good friends, Brother Gerald, I called him. I said, Brother, would you be a mentor in my life? I believe we all, we all need that. We all need mentors, people that we look up to, people that we can confide in. But also, and I told Brother CJ, I said, Brother, I give you complete authority. You see me getting out of line, you pull me to the side and you talk to me. I said, if it's not easy, if it's not nice, I said, you tell me what I'm doing wrong. And I put those barriers up in my, in my life. As you see, I lived away from God for 14 years. I can't afford to go back. There's nothing out there that I want to go back to. I think sometime in December was three years ago that I had a drink of alcohol. Sometime this month, I, I lost count of the dates. It really wasn't that important after God delivered me from it. But sometime in January was the last time I ever took a dip of snuff. There's nothing in this world that I want to go back to. 
He saved me from too much. He delivered me from too much. That old song said, I've come too far to go back now. If we could, could we all stand tonight? This may have been a little different than what you normally hear from me. And I want to read you just a couple of more scriptures and we're done. Matthew 6, 27, 31. What happens? How do we deal with offenses? Matthew 6, 27 says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them. Excuse me. Matthew 5, 23 and 24 says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. It's not whether who's right or wrong. It's not whether you're in the right. They shouldn't have said it. You shouldn't have said it. But it's all about reconciliation, forgiveness forgiveness we've got to forgive others it said if we want and expect God our Heavenly Father to forgive us then we must forgive those that have wronged us those that, that we feel have wronged us I challenge you if you hadn't got the book like brother Johnson said I've read it once and I think I've listened to the audio version three times just uh, in, over the Christmas break but Daniel I sent the PDF to a youth pastor friend of mine not, not that he was going through anything, just, just for a good read. And, and that was how I was introduced to this book. But it will challenge you. It will challenge almost every area of your life. Because the Bible says that offenses will come. But it's how we deal with those offenses. I want to open up the altars a little bit different tonight. We wouldn't embarrass anybody. God's not in the embarrassing business. He's in the helping business. But I want to open these altars up first tonight. If you feel like that you have been offended, I want you to come. You feel like this is, this is the night that I've got to break those walls. I ask you tonight, would you come? Like I say, not to embarrass you. We want to gather around you and pray for you. Let the saints of God rally around and pray for you tonight. Anybody else, would you want to come tonight? We're going to open these altars up for everyone that wants to come. Lord, help us when we are offended. Help us to learn to forgive. Amen. Let's come.